You know, all I do is tell them what God told me, and they want to come and, and make fun of me. They want to make me sound bad, and so I'm just going to shut up. But oh, I couldn't. Because it was like a wheel within a wheel. It was like a burning fire within me, and I could not shut up. I had to proclaim the word of God, church. When you let the Lord get a hold of your heart, he's going to stir you. He's going to change you. He's going to excite your life, and you can't help but tell about the good things that are going on. Yes. You know every service. I wish someone was taking count of how many sermons that I have preached behind this pulpit and didn't mention something about those grandkids of mine. You know I love them grandkids. You know I love those little kids. That's why I look and see like examples in them so many times. When you see something that you like, you talk about it. And you, it, it excites you. There's some people that see something they like and they begin to make a plan. Let me see what I can do to get that. I'm going to start saving up some money. I'm going to try to get a little bit set aside and save that until I get to the place where I can go get that because I want that so bad. When the Lord begins to stir within your heart and you open your heart, and let him have control. He's going to excite you just like that. These, the, the, this place that Jesus was in was so full, they couldn't even get in the door. There was a few people that had a friend who was paralyzed. I'm not sure how long he was paralyzed. But they said, if we can just get him in front of this man, Jesus, I know he'd heal him. I know he would. They went to the door, and obviously they couldn't get in. How do I know they went to the door? Because there ain't nobody in their right mind going to tear a hole through the ceiling when they could walk in the back door. They went to the door, but there were so many people there they couldn't get in. There's probably people standing there saying, well, listen, I got problems too. I know he's paralyzed, but I'm, I, I got problems too, and I'm going to try to get in there. And so, no, I'm not going to step aside for you to come through. I want my blessing too. Well, that didn't stop his buddy. But he went up on top of the house and they began to tear a hole through the door. I don't know if one of them knew exactly the, the distance it was from the back of the house to, the, to where Jesus was, but they cut a hole in that roof and they began to lower him down on that stretcher. Now, I'm going to tell you something, church, that takes a lot of faith. The man that was on the stretcher, it takes a lot of faith. I don't know how high that ceiling was. But it takes any amount of faith to let four buddies of yours lower you down by ropes when you're on a stretcher. They lowered him down, and when Jesus saw what was going on, he stopped. You remember how many times in the Word of God somebody stopped Jesus? Why did Jesus stop? Every time you read in the Word of God that Jesus stopped what he was doing, no doubt it was because of faith. Somebody with faith showed their faith that Jesus got his attention, or it got Jesus' attention. The time when the woman pushed through the crowd and said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, it stopped Jesus in his track. Last week or two weeks ago, I don't remember exactly when it was, we talked about the blind man that was sitting by the side of the road begging. And he heard Jesus going by, and he began to scream out. They said, shut up, be quiet. And he screamed out and called out that much more because he had a thought that if he could get a hold of Jesus Christ, he would receive his sight. So therefore, faith stopped Jesus in his tracks. Here's another incident. They lowered him down through the roof, and Jesus stopped. Now, wouldn't it be easier if they would have just sent a message, wrote it down on a piece of paper and said, here, take this to the man that's up there talking. We're out here in the parking lot. We're going to wait for him to come out here. It might have been easier. But some people have this feeling. While the waters are troubled, you better get in the water. 
And so they tore the holes through the roof and they lowered him down. Jesus saw the man and he said, Sir, your sins are forgiven. Now most people around said we didn't bring him in here because we needed him to have forgiveness of sin. We, we brought him in here because he's paralyzed. They didn't see the root of the problem. The biggest problem that the man had was he needed his sin forgiven. Wouldn't it be easier just to get to the root of the problem right away? Wouldn't it be easier? And that's exactly what Jesus Christ does. Jesus said to him, your sins are forgiven. And everybody around the Pharisees, Sadducees, they started mumbling against themselves. They said, who in the world does this guy think he is? Only God can forgive sin. And immediately Jesus knew what they were reasoning among themselves. And he even said, which is it easier to do? To say your sins are forgiven or to say take up your bed and walk? But just so you know that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sin. He looked at the man and said, take up your bed and go home. And guess what happened? His sins were forgiven. We'll focus on the fact that he jumped up, he picked up his bed, and he left and he went home. We'll focus on the healing. But you know the true miracle here was his sins were forgiven. Church with man, I don't know when they were lowering him down, if he was hollering and saying, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. All I know was there was some faith involved there. <clears throat> there was some faith involved in the men that were letting him down or the man that was let down. <clears throat> Somehow, in some way, there was some faith there that caused Jesus to realize this was someone who was believing in Jesus Christ. I don't know who had the greater faith. The man who let him down or the man that was on the stretcher. I kind of got a feeling like when they got to the back door, they told him, well, we can't even get in here. The man said, you got to get in here. Well, we can't. There's too much of a crowd here. Let's send a message. No, that's not good enough. Can you break down the wall? No, that's too hard to do that. You can't break through that wall. That's a cement wall. Can you break the door down? Let everybody stand in the doorways and they won't move. We can't get in there. What about the roof? They might have looked at him and said, are you crazy? But you got to understand the type of buildings that they had back then. It was easier for them to take the layers off the roof than it was to try to knock the doors down or knock a hole in the wall. The man said, well, let's go up to the I don't know if this is how it was, but this is the way I'm imagining it happened. They got him up on the roof. They tore the hole in. And I believe he looked at every one of them. And said, you lower me down in here. And you wait for me in the parking lot. And we'll all walk home together. Why? Because he had some faith. And when Jesus saw him, he knew what he really needed. Church, sometimes we don't know what we really need. Sometimes I think I need healing when what I really need is revival. There's sometimes I think I need deliverance from depression when what I really need is to, for my soul to be set on fire again and maybe I've got some hidden sin somewhere that the Lord needs to clean up. Sometimes we don't even realize what the root cause of the problem is. Jesus made it very clear that day. Your sins are forgiven. And you know Jesus, he didn't do anything random. He didn't do anything just because he did it to show that the Son of Man had the power to forgive sins as easily as he can heal the body. 